Well, I'm hoping that uh, in my interview with Doug that I can get him to uh, take some stances on some things that are happening in the world today and really uh, apply sort of a radical version of Christ's teachings to our society at the moment. Great. Well, um, I have questions. They're mainly about the reading, um, but some of them are about your sermon. Mm. Um, which I thought was great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, the first one, in the Mark reading, it says, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Um, I know Jesus had to endure a lot from sources of sort of illegitimate authority um, during his time. And... In fact, from what I can gather, one of the reasons Christ was so admired was because he offered such a new vision for how to build the kingdom of God that was so different from the sort of established view of things. So I, I just wanted to ask you in what ways Jesus did fight these illegitimate uh, authority sort of forces and why is that important that we remember that today? Well, I think he... Uh... I'm not sure if fight is the right word, but uh, he, he challenged uh, the, the prevailing uh, religious establishment uh, to the hilt, I think. Um, and although, I th yeah, to the hilt. I, th I think bear, bear in mind that um, it was the Roman, the Roman mob who mm. crucified him and yeah. whipped him and did all that stuff. Uh, and I don't think any of the Gospels or history for that matter uh, can offer any um, material concerning uh, what the intention of uh, the religious establishment was. You know, you had the, Phar well, Pharisees, scribes, um, the Sanhedrin, um, and uh, the, the, there's a, a tendency to demonize uh, certainly the Pharisees and uh, certainly the scribes. Mm. Uh, quite unfairly. Yeah, they always had the angry faces in the paper cutouts that we would do in Sunday school. Well, that would be right. Yeah. Well, well, the, and that, you know, that, that, in my view, is is quite unfair. I mean, if you look at um, the, uh, a, if you take a broader view of the um, Pharisaic movement, for example. Um, as I understand it, although I'm sure I could be challenged on this, uh, the, uh, the Judaism uh, would not have survived but for the Pharisees, mm. but for the synagogues and schools that they built yeah. throughout the Roman Empire. So, um, as I say, not all bad. They, they, they were responsible for giving uh, giving kids an education yeah. way before their time, as mm, it were, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, do, is, does that go anywhere towards, I'm not sure if it might have skirted around your question. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is true that with all things, there are sort of good elements. Um, mm. And obviously those were what I think we, we should always be positive um, and try and find the good in people. Yeah. So yeah, that, that well, and, that's and, great. And, uh, you know, if, if you do want to protest about that saying, uh, the, the people who did him in or who colluded in doing him in were extremists in, in, yeah. in Judaism. Hmm. Now, if you ask, talk to a Hasidic 
rabbi, I'm not sure if you get agreement with that. So there we go. Yeah. Um, well, my second question, uh, you talked about climate change in your sermon, mm. which is obviously a fairly um, pressing issue. Uh, in my view, the Morrison government and even our representative for Alstonville, who is Kevin Hogan, have done a pretty terrible job uh, in their capacity at protecting the world God created for us all and sort of entrusted us to protect. I mean, uh, just recently, Mr. Hogan criticised the Lismore City Council for returning some land to the traditional custodians uh, which was done in large part for environmental reasons. So my question is, should we as Christians be like Christ in standing up to these sort of anti-Christian forces within our society? And how much sort of suffering and rejection like that mentioned in the Mark verse uh, should we expect? I don't believe in martyrdom, if that's what you mean. That's not what I'm. That's not what I'm saying. I, yeah. I think it's like all things. There's good and evil. But I'm just wondering how we, in our capacity as followers of Christ, uh, should uphold our duty um, to protect Christ's world, and how much of that is adversarial. Uh, 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 well, first of all, I, I wouldn't uh, confine that demand or request to Christianity. I, 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 th I think this is a, um, a moral question and an ethical question. Hmm. And to, um, to make a special case for Christians doesn't make sense to me. This is, uh, we're talking about human beings here. Um, and uh, Yes, I think we should protest uh, to the hilt uh, according to our various gifts, um, which are um, quite various, I think you'd agree, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and in fact, um, largely, that's partly what I was getting at in my sermon, is, um, although I was, getting at it uh, through an argument to do with the way people listen. And if we're going to be particular, uh, the way uh, a politician listens. Mm. I, I was quite distressed. Uh, I had this epiphany recently um, when I came to the conclusion that um, Politics is a profession these days. P politics isn't, uh, uh, you know, a, a kind of um, ideal that you might follow yeah. and so on. It's become a pro profession. Mm. And because it's become a profession, it has become very protective of, uh, of its own um, of its own existence and uh, means of raising cash and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I think is dreadful. Yeah, I guess I was just wondering, because in addition to being, you know, human beings and needing to protect ourselves and our futures, um, I think obviously as Christians, we do have that extra connection to the land in that we have sort of been entrusted with it uh, by God to protect it and to uh, keep it safe from harm and safe from ourselves. Uh, and so I'm wondering how sort of Christianity as a religion can sort of mobilize everybody around the shared cause of protecting our environment. I, I, I disagree with your basic premise. Um, there was no Christianity when God, uh, uh, well, in, you know, in the Genesis uh, creation account, hmm. Christianity didn't become Christianity in, until what? Fifth century AD, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, your question, uh, the, 
to again to single out Christians as as some kind of uh, in this context that we're talking uh, having some kind of special mission doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. I guess I, I, I agree with you that it's not sort of uh, no one religion or no one person has an extra claim to it. Mm. I just think that certainly part of what informs my regard for the environment is my faith. Um, and I think it's, uh, it is important that for some within, uh, some people within Christianity that we do remind them of that extra element, if only for the purpose of saving the environment, which I agree shouldn't have a, an explicit religious connotation. But I'll move on to my next question. Um, yeah, you mentioned uh, young people in your sermon. Um, I'm actually involved this year in organising one of the school strikes, which is a protest action um, similar to that that Reverend Desiree mentioned a few weeks ago in one of her sermons regarding, of course, climate. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, how proactive do you think that uh, churches like ours should be in supporting movements like the climate strike, in which everyone, regardless of religion, can come together over the shared cause of saving the planet? I'm not sure if I totally understand your question. Um, the, uh, do you mean as, as a whole body, uh, how proactive should we be? Or? I think, you know, you sort of see like the Pope issue sort of statements about how yep. we need to protect the environment. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just wondering, like in our capacity as a church, even here, for example, how proactive do you think we should be in not only saying that we care about these issues, but actually doing stuff about it? I, I would suggest that um, within the body of the church, there's as broad a spectrum of opinions about um, activism uh, as there is in the general community. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm thinking partly of of uh, of our population, if you like, as Saint Bartholomew's. Mm -hmm. um, the, there are a large number of people who, uh, whether they wanted to or not. Uh, don't have the physical uh, capacity to do activism in terms yeah, of marching in the streets to trees. <laughs> or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, that said, uh, th there's a component of, um, of our congregation who, uh, as individuals, are extremely active mm -hmm. in their various mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. I'd invoke St. Paul. You know, uh, I, I was born without an activist bone in my body and I was brought up that way and I'm still that way. I'm yeah. not good at it. <laughs> and um, I'd, I'd rather uh, put my energy into this kind of issue in, in other ways. If I could... I just, I, I, I take your point that none of us know really what Jesus said, how he said it, when he said it, why he said it, because the text is just mm -hmm. so ancient. I just look at things that I see in the Bible and sort of the central themes mm -hmm. and try and apply that wisdom, no matter what it was in regards to then, to well, that, my life Pardon today. me interrupting. I think that your term central theme is very important because the, there is, there's a core theme yes. that runs throughout the whole of the Old Testament and is carried on through the New Testament. Hmm. 
And you've already articulated what the central theme is, and that's to do with justice, uh, uh, care of the poor, and yes. all that. Yeah. I'll, I'll you haven't asked me anything about the sermon yet. Oh, sorry about that. I, I, I do have more questions. I just I, didn't. I'm, I'm not fussed about that. I, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering how Robin's going to get material on the. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I, yeah, you uh, definitely have made me um, question some of my thinking, which is a good thing, I think. Oh, well, I'm delighted to hear it. I'm, if. Um, I. Uh, as a personal comment, I am always questioning what I'm thinking, theologically. Yes. Always. Mm. So, and, uh, you know, if you speak to any preacher who has any degree of integrity and honesty, they will say to you, well, it, my sermon last week followed me th for the whole week. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah.